This is the story of the Lady of Stavoren in the northern Holland province of Friesland, uh, where we are now. And I'll read out the entire legend to you as we know it. Once upon a time, the free city of Savoor was known in the Netherlands and well abroad for its wealth. It was a seafaring town and the tradesmen were well versed in trading goods all over the world. The houses of Savoor were large and clean and the citizens were incredibly wealthy. One of them was wealthier than all others, a young widow, yet her wealth was beyond measure. Even compared to that of the other citizens, she owned ships, storehouses and many goods for trading. As often is the case with extremely rich people, she was wealthy but not content. So one day she summoned her oldest skipper. <coughs> I will load your vessel full with gold, she said to the skipper. Full? With gold? the skipper asked. Yes, she said. <coughs> and with that gold you will get me the most precious thing that you can find on the face of the earth. The skipper turned pale. The most precious thing on earth, my lady, he asked. I'm afraid that it will not be on sale. How dare you question me, the lady raised her voice to the skipper. The most precious thing. That is what I want and that is what you will get me. My lady, I would advise you that you give that order to another skipper, somebody younger than me. Nobody knows the world like you do, skipper. You are my oldest captain and so you are entitled to this special assignment. So go, sail and get me the most precious thing on the face of the earth. She frowned and the skipper hurried off. He sailed all the seas known to him. He saw priceless carpets, expensive fur, rare porcelain, wood carved in patterns so intricate that he could hardly believe human hands had made it. But he did not find anything to his liking, anything that warranted the gold that his ship carried, anything that he dared to name the most precious thing on the face of the earth. <coughs> Finally he returned to Danzig, a place where he had been before. If he would not find the most precious thing there, he would give up and return with the gold to the Lady of Savora. In Danzig he found a storehouse where he was offered wheat, beautiful reddish-brown wheat, shining in the sun. A shipper took the grains in his hands and looked closely at them. The grains were large and radiated in the sun. Wheat? Would that be the most precious thing on the face of the earth? The skipper thought long and hard. One grain of this wheat sinks in the earth. It lays there and it waits, waits for the sun and the rain. When the sun and rain touch the earth, the wheat starts swelling and growing and the stalk becomes visible. The wind bends it and makes it grow further. And so from that one grain, many new grains grow, and together these grains feed people. The skipper reasoned with himself, this is what feeds people. Surely that must be the most precious thing on the face of the earth. His face lightened with recognition. He had found what he had sailed all the, sea, what he had sailed all the seas of the world for. Happily, he exchanged his shipload of gold for a shipload of wheat. He sailed home as fast as the wind would carry him. The lady was already waiting for him on the dock. Her voice was lost in the wind, but the skipper understood immediately. She wanted to know what he brought her. Weep, my lady, he shouted, hoping that she would hear him. In the deafening silence that followed, a black bird flew between the dock and the ship. Do I hear you correctly? The lady screamed from the dock. Weed, is that what you said? You brought me weed? Indeed, my dear lady, the, shipper, the skipper shouted back. As delicious as I ever saw it, as beautiful as you've never seen it, full of grain, more beautiful than it has ever grown on your lands. His words were greeted with howls from the crowd that had gathered around the lady on the dock. They made fun of her and of the skipper. Wheat, ha, that will look marvelous in your living room, some teased. Others said, that will make for great jewelry. We can't wait to see you with the most expensive necklace made of wheat. The lady was blind with anger. Her eyes blazed and her face was distorted with rage. Throw it overboard, she ordered the skipper, and don't talk back to me, just do as I order. The crowd agreed with her, but as the skipper was about to lift the anchor, a crippled old man moved to the front of the crowd. My lady, he spoke with difficulty, his voice barely audible over the cheering crowd. My lady, do not waste this beautiful gift I beg of you. If you don't want it, give it to the poor. Weed is food, my lady, and it should not be wasted. Give it to the poor if it's not to your liking. He begged the lady, but his begging gaze was met with cold, merciless eyes. My lady, the man tried once again. I do not speak to beggars, the lady said, and she repeated her order. Then the beggar straightened himself and raised his voice to a magnificent, far-reaching level. You despise the grain and the people who have to live in poverty. One day you hear me, my lady. One day you will live in poverty. One day you will make your rounds, your head held low and your hand held high, to catch the pennies and the grains people want to give you. Mark my words. The crowd fell silent, but not the lady. She smiled contemptuously. Me? A beggar? Man, how dare you speak to me like that? She took a heavy golden ring with rubies from her finger and threw it into the sea. 
I will never be a beggar. Who knows the extent of my treasures? Who? And she looked around, <clears throat> with her pitiless eyes blazing with an angry fire. This ring will return from the sea to my hand before your prophecy will come true. Mark my words. And with that, the lady swept up her skirts and marched home. The skipper did as he was ordered and threw the grains overboard. The beggar disappeared as quickly as he had come. A few weeks later, the lady ordered new skippers to take out her fleet to find the most precious thing on the face of the earth. She loaded the ships full with her gold. She watched in admiration as her entire fleet sailed from the harbor, the sails strong and proud in the wind. That same evening, her mate prepared a meal for a giant fish that she had bought from a new fisherman who seemed <coughs> not to have been in the city before. She opened the belly of the fish and then froze. She ran to her lady. Your ring, my lady, I just found your ring in the gut of the fish we bought on the market today. With trembling hands, she handed the ring to the lady who had gone strangely pale. But the lady took a deep breath and did not allow herself to show any further sign of weakness. What could possibly happen to her? As she pondered that thought, there was a knock at the door. My lady, your entire fleet has perished, the man at the door panted. We've seen the wooden parts washing up on the shore. That was the first of many disasters that happened in the following days, weeks and years. Within a few years, the once wealthy lady was reduced to poverty and her proud, erect figure started to bend. Though she was still young, she looked like any old beggar. Any old beggar, basically. But the kids in the street still recognize her. The Lady of Stavoren, they shouted teasingly after her. The Lady of Stavoren, people said, shaking their heads in pity, but quickly closing their doors as she approached to beg for a bit of bread or for a pen. That summer, when she looked at the sea, she saw <coughs> large stalks appearing above the waterline. Would that be the wheat growing? In disbelief, she shook her head. It couldn't be, could it? The other citizens saw the stalks as well. It turned out that the growing of the wheat in the sea marked not only the end of the wealth of the Lady of Savoir, but also the end of the wealth of the entire town. The entire town who had made fun of that old skipper who had brought the wheat home as the most precious thing on the face of the earth. Now that's the legend of the Lady of Savora as we know it from our childhoods.